Thank you, Mr. President. I'll just say a, a few words. Today is a day of great sadness as we remember and honor one of our own. It was only three years ago that Senator Lois Snowmellow sat in one of these chairs at one of these desks as a member of this chamber. Now, someone with more institutional memory than I would have to remember which chair and which desk, but she spent six years here and eight down the hall in the lower chamber, representing at different times the communities of Auburn, New Gloucester, Poland, Minot, and Durham. Now, I know that many members in this chamber personally served with Lois. I have only heard the, stories, the stories of Lois in her prime, but there are plenty of stories to go around. She was small of stature, but mighty of spirit. She was a spitfire. There's no better word I can think of to describe her. She had an opinion on everything, and she always let you know. As a result, she never shied away from controversial issues, and she always spoke up for what she believed to be right. The former Senate President Rick Bennett shared a story from this chamber when Lois was still serving in the main house. He said, quote, I voted in the wrong way on something important to her, and she hustled down the hallway to the Senate chamber and gave me a good talking to. She was unabashed about letting people know her friends, as well as her adversaries, when they were in the wrong, and she was also very supportive when you, when you were in the right with her. For those who knew and worked with her, we all have those stories. For me, Lois was not just a good friend and colleague. She was a mentor and an unofficial grandmother to me. When I decided to seek this office, Lois, Lois was my partner every step of the way. I benefited from her experience she encouraged me, she challenged me, and when I got here, she continued freely giving me her advice. You know, a life well lived by the amount of positive impact on the lives around it. As I visited with Lois over the last few months, both in the hospital and in hospice, so many people came to visit. While there were many dignitaries, governors, and United States senators visiting and sending their regards, what was most impressive were her constituents. From her constituents, the stories and memories have been pouring in. It seems that everyone has a story of a time that Lois helped them or their family with an issue, or even just listened. That was one lesson Lois always taught me. Her motto was, listen, heed, help, and lead. In the last few days, speaking with her myself, holding her hand, even as she was in and out of consciousness, even as her eyes could barely open, you knew that she was still listening. And while she couldn't respond so easily anymore, if you look closely, you could see that same, that same gusto in her face, the fire in her eyes looking back at you when you spoke with her. Excuse me. For much of the last two years, Lois spent much of her time caring for her husband, Brian, who fell ill and passed last year. It hasn't been a full year since Lois sat in the chamber with us as we honored Brian Mello and his life. Now today we are joined by Lois's, some of Lois's closest friends, Paula Brill of Poland, Lucille Gillette of Auburn, Rita Medora of Auburn, as we honor Lois. It was comforting to know that as Lois went through this, she never went without a friend or family member by her side for a single moment. So thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me to, this time to speak and honor our friend and colleague, Senator Lois Mello. Thank you.